Macedonia, home of Alexander the Great, perhaps the greatest conqueror the world has ever known. Though scorned by ancient Greeks as barbarians and long neglected by scholars, the ancient Macedonians are now being recognized as a people of wealth and sophistication. Their royal tombs have yielded staggering works of art, gold and silver, and enduring riddles about the genius behind Alexander's greatness. But to the people of Athens, the setting for Greece's golden age, the Macedonians who produced Alexander were not Greek at all. Because the Macedonians were a warlike people, subject to autocratic kings, the Athenian orator Demosthenes saw them as completely barbarian, unfit even to be slaves. The rise of the Macedonians was once viewed by historians as a depressing postscript to the glory that was Greece. Historian Eugene Borza has specialized in the culture of ancient Macedon. What we know about the Macedonians are primarily from Greek sources, or traditions derived from the Greek sources, and therefore we have a, a skewed view of them depending upon the views of the people who were largely their enemies in antiquity. Greeks, after all, lived in city-states, the way Greeks thought proper civilized people should live, whereas the Macedonians lived under what the Greeks considered to be a primitive and highly authoritarian monarchy. At the site of Macedonia's royal palace in Medina, archaeologist Stella Druho explains. Macedonia was ruled by kings. It was a kingdom. Athens had democracy, a great achievement of the Greek civilization. Demosthenes defended democracy versus monarchy, the Macedonian political system. Philip, seeking the acceptance of the Greeks, sent a horse and chariot to the Olympic Games and invited the great poets and scholars of Greece, such as Aristotle, to the Macedonian capital of Pella. But the Greeks, influenced by the orator Demosthenes, continued to see Philip as a tyrant, a hard-drinking lecher, and a barbarian who had no right to claim the mantle of Greece. From his Olympian kingdom, stung by rejection, Philip would bring the disrespectful Greeks to bear. Through force of arms, Philip united the Macedonian kingdom and defeated neighboring tribes to the north and east. His infantry took up a revolutionary weapon, the Sarissa. This spear, nearly twice as long as the Greek spears, kept the enemy almost hopelessly at bay. He perfected the previously little-known art of siege warfare creating a corps of engineers to design siege engines and catapults that became the terror of Greece. Artifacts uncovered at Pella are ample proof of a rich Macedonian culture. Excavations by our colleagues in Greece have brought to light um, sufficient examples of an exquisite taste in art that suggests that these Macedonians were not a race of barbarians as Demosthenes and other Greeks had charged. Eugene Borza believes historians of Alexander and his world conquest have obscured the culture of the Macedonians. For Borza, the truly heroic figure of Macedonian history, by far a better example of its greatness, was the father of Alexander, Philip II. Undoubtedly, Alexander was young and impetuous and brilliant, and perhaps, along with Napoleon, the greatest military genius of all times. But he was not a thinker and a planner as Philip was. Philip had enormous diplomatic as well as military skills and was a leader of men in a way that perhaps Alexander was not. The most significant Macedonian artifacts yet found 
are in the village of Vagina, some 30 miles north of Mount Olympus in northern Greece. Archaeologists now believe this to be the ancient city of Aegean. Here in 1977, a team led by acclaimed Greek archaeologist Manolis Andronikos found a tomb apparently undisturbed since the 4th century BC. It was the first intact Macedonian burial ever found. Archaeologist Stella Drujo, now director of the Vagina site, assisted Andronicus during his momentous excavation. We got to the point of opening the tomb. It was an impressive experience for us as archaeologists and as human beings. We had to be calm and accept what we found. When we entered the tomb, we stopped thinking as scientists, but felt as humans the deep connection between ancient times and our own. As Manolis Andronicus and his team scrambled through a hole made above the marble doors, they saw a room brimming with treasure. A gilded quiver leaned up against the marble doors. Behind it lay 74 arrowheads and decomposed wooden shafts. Exquisitely made bronze and silver vessels. swords and armor trimmed in gold. A crested helmet of the style worn in Philip and Alexander's military campaigns. And scattered bits of gold, leather and ivory that after five years of painstaking reconstruction would prove to be a beautiful ceremonial shield. But the best was yet to come. Against one wall was a solid gold casket bearing the emblem of the Macedonian royal house, a sunburst. Inside were the bones of royalty. Nearby, an exquisite gold foil wreath, the heaviest ever discovered. Some of its 313 golden oak leaves showed signs of scorching. Perhaps it was a crown for the monarch during his cremation. Though the identity of the buried king is unknown, the treasure found in the tomb is unmistakable proof that the Macedonians were not a barbaric tribe whose only accomplishment was making war. Whether done by indigenous Macedonian craftsmen or uh, by uh, Greeks and others working in Macedonia or imported from elsewhere, there's nothing else quite like it uh, anywhere in the ancient world. Archaeologists are finding increasing evidence that the Macedonians had a far more sophisticated culture than previously thought. but they are also exposing a civilization beset by tragedy. But Alexander would take his father's place as the immortalized conqueror of the world. Alexander would never return to his native Macedonia. Having completed his conquest, he died in Babylon at the age of 32. His mysterious death came after a long bout of alcoholic revelry. Some have suggested he was poisoned. In the meantime, his campaign had exhausted the resources of his people. Macedonia would fall prey to waves of political corruption and intrigue. Its golden age was over. Ironically, Alexander, regarded by many Greeks as barbaric, would be the means by which Greek culture would spread throughout the world. He would establish cities bearing his name, many to become centers of learning where Greek civilization would be kept alive, overshadowing the culture of Macedonia. 